And Our Lady of Sorrows is particularly relevant for this hour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nine Day Novena to Our Lady of Sorrows. We want to thank you for so much for joining us and giving us your time. We hope that you're going to be blessed over these nine days. My name is Ken Yuzinski, and this is my best friend. Janelle Yuzinski. And we are pleased to be able to serve you. We are going to be doing a video every day for nine days. We're going to do a little reflection on a topic of Our Lady of Sorrows, and then after the, this video, we're going to lead right into prayer. Once this is done, on the 15th of September is the official feast day of Our Lady of Sorrows. I forgot that point. Yes. <laughs> Key. That's okay. why we're doing this. <laughs> the seven sorrows of Mary. Why seven? Because Mary obviously suffered more than just seven times. Mm -hmm. uh, so the seven is a perfect number. So we look at the different events in her life, highlighting seven different sorrows because she suffered perfectly. Mm. And there's great lessons in each one of these, but it's not that she just suffered just seven times. No, she suffered continuously, as we will see as we go through each one of these sorrows. Uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori uh, made a really interesting point. He said that if we were given this grace to see all the trials of our life in the future, what would happen to us? Um, Ooh, I'd get discouraged. Yeah. I, I'd be I, like, I don't want to go on. Well, I, I can't even get through a day sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting through yeah. the trial, trials of the moment is very challenging. So he said God has compassion on us mm. and that he doesn't show us the future because the future can get overwhelming. But he did not spare Our Lady of this trial. Mm. And many of the saints, as we will see, speak of how Our Lady knew of the things that were coming in some way, and she suffered intensely because of that throughout her entire life. Now, why would God allow her to suffer this way? Well, she is the perfect disciple of Jesus, and so she's like Jesus in every way that we can be humanly speaking. And so she becomes then the queen of sorrows because she triumphs over all of them and does not despair we can run to her for assistance now. She's our advocate. And so we're in trying times. COVID-19 wrapping itself around the world. There's great confusion morally, mm -hmm. politically. Mm -hmm. um, people are struggling. And Our Lady of Sorrows is particularly relevant for this hour, I believe. Our Lady of Sorrows wasn't like Jesus in that she suffered in a physical passion. Hers was an interior passion or a mental passion. So maybe you're coming in here and you, got, you feel like you're in the passion. And maybe it's a physical one. Our Lady can assist in that. But maybe it's up here, a mental one. Your heart is breaking. Our Lady knows all about mm. that. So I believe that she can win great grace for us during this time with mental illness, discouragement, depression. And we mm -hmm. can seek her to win grace for ourselves, but for other people. Mm -hmm. Now, Janelle, you have something to say about the history. Yes, and I was just, when you were saying that, I just feel like she's a good mother, mm. that she's not going to abandon her children. Okay, so um, the history of Our Lady of Sorrows basically it comes out of the 13th century with St. Bridget of Sweden, which is another one of our favorite saints because she's brought to us the St. Bridget prayers. If you want to know more, more about that, I'll link right here if you're watching on mobile. Mm -hmm. Those are a very powerful prayer. Um, St. Bridget of Sweden also gave us the promises um, that are associated to this devotion. Number one, I will grant peace to their families. Who doesn't want peace for their families? Number two, they will be enlightened about the divine mysteries. Number three, I will console them in their pains and will accompany them in their work. Number four, I will give them as much as they ask for, as long as it does not oppose the adorable will of my divine son or the sanctification of their souls. Five, I will defend them in their spiritual battles with the infernal en enemy, and I will protect them at every instant of their lives. Just as an aside, like I feel like at, with young children, I, I can tell I'm at the point now where I have to trust in Our Lady and trust in their guardian angels to give them extra protection because I just can't physically be there to protect them all the time. I will visibly help them at the moment of their death. They will see the face of their mother. When I read this, I was thinking about that. At the moment of my death, I'm gonna to get to see her face. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> why am I so emotional? And I'm not even pregnant. Okay, <laughs> number seven. I have obtained, obtained this grace from my divine son that those who propagate this devotion to my tears 
and sorrows will be taken directly from this earthly life to eternal happiness, since all their sins will be forgiven and my son will be their eternal consolation and joy. So spread this devotion, share these videos. Share these videos every day. So as you can see, there's great graces available to those who are devoted to Our Lady of Sorrows. How do we open our hearts to these graces? We gotta pray. So there's different ways that we can pray. We've selected one. Again, many different beautiful devotions regarding Our Lady of Sorrows. We've just selected one, the Chaplet of the Seven Sorrows of Mary. Created a beautiful prayer video. It'll be linked at the end of this video if you're watching this on Facebook. There'll be a, sorry, on YouTube. And then if you're watching this in the private Facebook group, there's gonna be a link. Pray with it or else all of this is lost. Mm -hmm. And as you go through the, each decade is a different sorrow. For example, the first sorrow of Mary is... Simeon announces the suffering destiny of Jesus. So when you're praying that chaplet on that decade, I want you to immerse yourself into that scene. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? Be a character. Let your imagination enter into that, and the Lord will use that to speak to you. This is the cataphatic way of praying uh, done by St. Teresa of Avila and also St. Ignatius of Loyola. You, you use your imagination be in the scene, be a character, and the Lord will use that to speak. So that's how we can use this chaplet. Anything mm -hmm. else to add? I have a question. What if somebody wants to offer up an intention for this novena? Can they do that? Sure, why not? Something totally separate, something mm -hmm. maybe that's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. They want to offer that up? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to add some fasting during these nine days. That would be excellent. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to do some extra penance of some sort. And we welcome your comments as well. In, in the bottom of this video, let us know what you thought and any additional thoughts are welcomed as well. Mm -hmm. We're glad you are here. Now, let's pray.